From the makers of Cold Water Omo. Look at this, Jason. The wire from the microphone down in the wainscoting has been pulled out. So, that's why the conversation between Steve and Pelly was not recorded on tape record next door. Yes. It is Steve, Jason. He's on to us. He must be. Yes, he'll have to go. The woman Loris tapped the broken wires against an elegantly manicured hand. Her eyes hardened. She turned to Sir Wilfrid Pelly. Yes. He, among others, will have to go. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. of this story in which John Steed takes full account of the man who shot George Oblique Stroke XR40. John Steed had tried yet again to communicate with Sir Wilfred Pelley, the inventor and designer of the supercomputer George XR40. But Sir Wilfred had insisted upon staying in his country home, although Steed had picked up sufficient information to know that there was something very much amiss in the house. Outside, Steed found a little trouble with his car and dallied a while, head in engine. It didn't do much good. The engine was perfect. And the delay, not really profitable. You got trouble, Governor? Hmm? Oh, uh, yes, yes, it's uh, just a loose wire. Often happens, even in the best regulated circles. Uh, you're the gardener? Oh, job, man. Tell us a name. I'll do anything for a price. I see. Extraordinary. Well, good. But I, um, I think I can manage this myself. Uh, thank you, Keller. Well, that should do it. Uh, good day to you, uh, Keller. Goodbye, sir. In the house, Loris approached the chair in which slumped the exhausted figure of Sir Wilfred Pelly. I warned you. I warned you, Sir Wilfred. I said one wrong word. I said nothing. I can force it out of you, you know. Who talked about my health and the, and the computer? That was all. But why did he come back? To see if I needed help. I refused. No. Steve came back here for a reason. Jason, run that first tape again. I want to check every word. The first conversation you had with Steed in this house. That's the answer. Right. And this is it. It's all set up. Here goes. I've worked for three years on that Right, I'm going over every, every word. And the day went by years at Harwell without so much as a day off. Pressures in the space of the day. Set up with the Minister Steed. There's a week to each one as though one were a computer. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I understand. But... How? Let's have Jason. Howell, turn that thing out. Howell. You've never worked at Howell, have you, Sir Wilfred? What do we do? I've told you. Get rid of Steed. He's the one who would have got the message. Get rid of him. Please. Please. No more games for you, darling. From now on, the pressure is on. Really on. <laughs> Come here. You want me, Jason? Yes. Steed, 
The, the man who just left, you saw him? Spoke to him. Kill him. All right. I, I should get those roses bedded in before it runs. No, Keller. We want him dead now. It could take time. Not this one. No finesse. Just both barrels at point blank range. <laughs> Later in the day, the subject of Loris's wrath is sitting having a quiet cup of coffee with Emma Peel in his own apartment. So you think that Sir Wilfred is some sort of prisoner, see? Yes, sure of it. The question is, who were his guards and why are they there? But how did they get rid of their original staff? Hmm, good point. Too risky to move them. That means they're probably held in the house somewhere. Not locked in the, uh... Oh, no, usually too small for a large staff. Now, wait a moment. If we're right, then the message, the message from George XR, now, that could have been Sir Wilfred using the computer, using the computer to get a message out to us. Help Kelly. You mean, that wasn't George asking Sir Wilfred for help, but Sir Wilfred asking us for help. Yes, and Baines was killed to prevent us finding out where the tape came from. Well, the thought occurs to me. Now, now I should have it here somewhere with the whole file on Sir Wilfred. Is there anything about his memory? Hmm? Sir Wilfred, doesn't he have a reputation for having a perfect memory? Hmm, photographic. So? Given enough time... And no interruptions, say, in the privacy of his own home. Someone could squeeze him dry. That's right. That's where the action is, Mrs. Peel. Not with George XR and the Heron establishment, but down at Sir Wilfred's country home. If we made it official, Steve, surrounded the place, troops perhaps... Well, the first thing they'd do would be to kill Pelly. You can't be sure they will. Well, can you be sure they won't? Well, look, we, we can't take that risk. We'll have to be a little more subtle... Where the devil's that file? Ah, here we are. Steed picked out a photograph of a young girl of 17. Yes. Your nose is a bit longer. Eyes aren't there, though. Mm. And the ears... What's wrong with my ears? They don't match. Don't match? Of course they do. One either side, same size, shape. Ah, match with this. Sir Wilfred's niece, Prunella. Oh. Taken when she was about 17 or 18. She'd be about your age now. I see. Well, we do have to have someone in the house from now on. And you want me to cry uncle? That's the girl. Prunella. I mean, you just recovered from impersonating Pandora. Is that really fair to a girl? <laughs> It didn't take long for Mrs. Peel to move once the plan had been decided upon. She obtained the directions for motoring down to Sir Wilfred's home, studied at some length the details of the house and garden that Steed was able to give her, and then left his apartment. It was raining when she walked towards her car. Had it not been raining, Mrs. Peel might have noticed the car parked at the back of hers. It was an ordinary black saloon. The young man behind the wheel was Keller. He reached into the back seat and found a large Macintosh, which he draped carefully over a shotgun. He looked up at Steve's apartment and smiled. I'd, I'd like to speak to Dr. Ardmore, please. Yes, Dr. Ardmore. Well, just tell him it's John Steed. Yes, I'll hold on. Keller had gained the entrance to the apartments without meeting anyone and slipped into the corridor that led to Steed's flat. Hello? Hello? Ardmore speaking. Ah, hello there, John Steed. Call to find out if there's any more news uh, about George XR. Uh, afraid not, Steed. We are doing all we can. He is having constant attention, even to the extent of an oil trip. But it's only just keeping him going. No real improvement. I see. But no deterioration? No. I can't carry on, though. The whole structure is weakening. Look, tell me, Dr. Ardmore, the tape we left with you, uh, the one you say only George can interpret, 
Would it be possible for the tensor equation on that tape to convert into a message? You mean some kind of code? Exactly. There was a long pause on the telephone. Steed wondered if Ardmore had gone away, but he was merely thinking. Outside in the corridor, Keller had reached Steed's door. Hello? You there? Yes, 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 I'm here. I suppose it's possible for there to be a code, but only a top mathematician could do it. Someone like Sir Wilfred Pelley, for instance. Would you? Uh, yes, he would have to be in his class, yes. The handle on Steed's door turned silently. I see. Uh, well, thank you, Dr. Ardmore. The door opened a matter of six inches. The barrel of the shotgun was thrust through. Thank you. I'll ring the letter. Goodbye. John Steed dropped to the floor behind the protection of his desk. Keller was silhouetted in the doorway, calmly reloading his shotgun. Steed picked up a small ashtray and threw it across the room. At the same moment, Steed lunged across the room. Keller, holding his gun at waist level with professional skill, tracked Steed's run and fired both barrels. Destructive boy, this one. While Keller was reloading yet again, Steed, twisting and ducking, shot across the room into the passage that led to his bedroom. He slammed the connecting door, seized a sword stick from his umbrella stand and dropped to the ground. The blast ripped a hole about three feet wide out of the door. Through this hole, Steed aimed the sword stick, using it like a spear. <laughs> Exit. Keller. The killer. Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Elmo.